Welcome to Rolling Intentions. My name is Jason, and today uh, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're not doing a progression series right now. And I know it's been a while since the last time I did a progression series. Um, I guess at least to the next point, but uh, usually right. Well, as of right now, I'm just taking a little bit of break from it. I probably will. Prob I don't know. I might do one tonight. It might not be a progression, but I might play a game tonight. We'll see. I'm thinking about probably ditching out uh, one of the Gen Con decks tonight and giving that a go. Whether whether I win or lose, I might just progress to the next. Um, but I wanted to see. Uh, as of right now, what am I doing? Well, I am showing you a new site uh, that I just found not too long ago, thanks to the Cardboard of the Rings guys. Uh, it is called, uh, I guess, RingsDB uh, at RingsDB.com. And... This is a different sort of card DB setup, or card DB, of course, is for all the different living card games and whatnot. Uh, this is actually just for Lord of the Rings, and I like the way it looks better than a lot of other databases. Uh, I've used Bjorn's, which is actually pretty decent. I've used uh, card DB, of course, which is a little bit, I find that a little bit confusing. But uh, this one, I, I'm not really sure. I like. I think this is only for the... Player cards. I don't think you can actually look at the um, errata. Is cool. Uh, I don't think you can actually look at the. Yeah, you can't. You can't actually look, at least as of right now. Maybe it's, maybe it'll change later. At the uh, uh, quest cards, it just shows the player cards. At least as of right now. I'm sorry, guys. I just came off a shift, so I'm, I'm a little bit tired. Uh, and I apologize if I yawn. But today, what I'm going to do, not only am I going to show you this site and uh, what I think is so cool about it, but I'm also going to show you another thing. And the purpose of this is we've done something before where you're brand new. You're a brand new player. You just got into Lord of the Rings. You got your core set. I showed you um, how to build or how to think about building. I mean, I, I showed you a deck, okay? That's not the best deck you can make. There are different builds, lots of different types of cards. I just showed you the way that I build a deck, um, and uh, at least with limited selection of stuff, right? And you guys can go ahead and build many decks with the core set, and all of them, not all of them, but most of them will be at least adequate, if not good, uh, for, for multiplayer and solo. But the deck I made last time was a solo deck, and it was uh, just out of a single core. So today, I'm going to bring you through what you could do, uh, how you can, I guess, you know, uh, say if you're on a limited budget and you want to be able to play this game. Well, there's different variations of the game uh, that you can play. For instance, if you're on a limited budget, you're probably going to, you know, if you got a hundred bucks, let's say you've got the core set uh, and a hundred bucks, or even let's even break it down even further. Let's say you got a hundred bucks, period, and you want to be able to play this game uh, with others. You want to be able to play with others um, and have a good time. Now, I'm going to say this right now. Most the decks that I'm going to show you, at least um, based on the different methods, I guess you can play this game. Um, other people might be playing the same type of decks because they're they are budget uh, decks. I'm not going to actually build one here. I, I probably should, but I'm going to show you the bases of uh, the, which packs to get to build the um, to build a type of deck that might be able to get you what you want, at least what the, what you're looking for, right? So there are three different types of, of builds. Uh, one is a gamer's build where you're building up a uh, building up the deck to win. Um, it, it doesn't have to be thematic. It doesn't have to make sense uh, in the game lore aspect. And um, But at least you're, you're building the deck so that uh, you have a good chance of winning uh, either solo or with other people. Uh, so I'm going to show you that uh, first. The second thing is thematic. So uh, there is a couple. There's a couple that are both thematic and combo-y, uh, which is the third one. But there there are uh, thematic decks which you know feel good. They feel good because they have a nice theme to them, um, and they have. Uh, I guess I guess you know uh, they give you the overall thematic sense of what Lord of the Rings is all about, right? And I'm going to show you how to get that. At a relatively decent price. Now there, there are, you know, once again, we're we're, we're going to probably try to deal with the minimal amount of 
of, of amount of money to spend as possible, okay? Uh, and this is in Canadian dollars, so $100 Canadian is not a whole lot <laughs> I can give, I can guarantee you right now. If you look at the, uh, especially the, uh, the economy um, in Canada, uh, we just suck. And the third thing is combo e cards, uh, combo e decks, where they're kind of like, no, I, you know, somebody told me the, the actual terminology for this. And please, if you know it below, please let me know what the actual terms are. We really know. But a combo decks literally are what they are. They they work well with each other. They could be thematic. They could be theme decks. Now, thematic decks and theme decks don't always mean the same thing, okay? Uh, but, um, but at least. Um, and I'm going to also bring you through some of the, the questing too, you know, the, 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 which ones to get for the quest. However, uh, in saying that, uh, combo we decks usually involve uh, certain cards that work together to cause certain combos, or at least to have a good feel to um, that you're more complicated. Generally, they're more complicated than other decks. Um, but uh, the ones that I'm going to be showing you for the combo we sort of stuff is just basically things that work together in a gamey sense. Um, but are but are they 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 work together in a a different sense, right? Where where it's not all just just play cards and 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 win the game. So for okay, so first of all, what we're gonna do. I'm gonna talk talk a bit a bit about um, the first thing I mentioned, which is gamer decks or gamey decks, uh, ones that are good for people who want to win. Um, and like I said, this is one of the more popular ones, um, mainly because it it does have a really good win uh, win ratio. Um, and there are some quests that are built against it, so there are some quests that you can play that are designed to actually destroy this particular deck. Um, but in general, this one does pretty good. So first of all, you're going to have your core set, and as you can see here, you're going to have uh, these cards here. We're going to go into more details once once I get into because everybody, we have already went through the core set. I went through this in detail in a previous episode, so if you wish to go ahead and take a look at my review on the core set, please look at the... Uh, my one of my previous episodes before um, I guess after I beat the core and take a gander at that I go through and I actually build a deck out of it and I even kind of do uh, a bit of a synopsis on the core set so that's that's pretty early um, but anyways and I actually do a, a whole review on the shadows of Mirkwood I think it called the door Dow Delf Dow door Delf Dow Delf. <laughs> I, I called it the round cycle earlier, I think. But either way, um, we're going to be concentrating more on the other cards. So, and I know we haven't got to it yet. I haven't got to that progression yet. But um, sadly, I started kind of late in the in the run. So this this is my my help you get a good budget deck. Um, I guess a little chat, okay? And I know I've been taking forever to get into it. So let's let's just start it. So once again, you're going to have your core set. Uh, you're going to have a bunch of these ones and twos uh, and a bunch of threes of, of different things. So way to go. Uh, so what are the key cards in the core set that I'm going to be talking about here for this gamey deck? Well, uh, we've got Aragorn. Leadership Aragorn is probably going to be very uh, important. Uh, we also have uh, Theodred. So as you can see, Aragorn and Theodred kind of match up pretty well. Um, and we'll just take a gander at this. So the heroes that I'm going to be talking about a little bit, a bit out of the core, a bit out of the other one. Uh, and I'll show you which ones that I would recommend. Uh, but I'm going to give you some selections. So I'm going to show you some other stuff. So here's Aragorn right here. As you can see, uh, he has um, you know 12 threat, 2 willpower, 3 attack, 2 defense, and 5 hit points. So he's pretty pretty hefty um, in, in every aspect, right? Uh, he's a Duodane Noble Ranger. Sentinel, which is great. Good for multiplayer. After Aragorn commits to a quest, spend one resource to ready him. So that's that's a pretty cool hero uh, out of the core set. So we'll keep him in mind as we're going through this. And Theodred um, is the other hero I'm going to be talking about a little bit in detail later on. But he is a threat, one willpower, two attack, one defense, four hit points. He's a noble Rohan warrior. As you can see, noble's very... Um, so far, Noble's been in everybody's name. I don't know if that's going to be relevant soon. Uh, and then after he commits to a quest, uh, choose a hero, and that hero can get one resource. So you can literally get that resource to Aragorn, and he doesn't need to uh, exhaust to... Well, actually, he does, he does exhaust, but then he can ready himself right away to attack or defend or whatever else you want to do with him. That requires him. So there's a lot of heroes here. I mean, we can go through all these heroes and, and come up with this good gamey deck. But those are the two I'm going to go with. I may not end up choosing those two in the end. So we got 100 bucks. 
corset itself is probably about 40 bucks. So really, we don't have a whole lot more money to deal with. Um, so uh, really, all we have enough to afford uh, is either out of $100, we're probably looking at a box set, so another ex box expansion, uh, and probably another AP or an adventure pack. Now, um, if you go a little bit more and spend it on two adventure packs, you can actually, you know, so that's a little bit more than 100 bucks. You can get a little bit more give out of it, but we're just going to go with uh, with what I just said. So if you're looking to build a gamey deck, so we got a core set, you got to get that anyways. The next set that I would recommend, um, and even though I do not recommend this for the quest, for God's sakes, um, if you're looking to, if you're looking to quest, so maybe the you know one of the third one of the things we should talk about afterwards is which ones are best probably to quest in uh, if you've got a deck you want to play, but uh, for 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 the name of God do not buy this uh, this expansion pack I'm going to show you for the quests you may not want to play ever again but uh, just because they're hard now you can still the deck I'm going to build could probably beat it solo but um, it's 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 pretty tough pretty tough even for now so we've got the heirs of Numenor. And you're probably saying, well, Watson, Heirs of Numenor is really good. To be completely honest, not a whole lot uh, that you're going to be using in here. Um, but uh, you need this uh, because the expansion packs uh, work hand-in-hand -hand with the adventure packs. And there is an adventure pack out of the set that we're going to need. But uh, what do you get with this? Well, first of all, you get Baragon. Okay, so he's really good. And uh, so we're going to actually be talking about him, too. Uh, so he's a 10 threat, zero defense, uh, sorry, zero will power, one attack, four defense, four hit points, Gondor Warrior, Sentinel. And, uh, he, of course, if you try to get a weapon on him or armor, it reduces by two. So if you try to put some, he's Sentinel, yes. So if it lowers the cost to play weapon or armor on Baragorn by two. So what's that mean? Well, what that means is that if you're looking to bump up his defense, um, and turn him into a wicket defender. Uh, we can do that. I don't know if that's actually here at the moment. Uh, Shield of Gondor. I don't see it there, but it might be the next thing. So Baragon, he's really good. Uh, I I would not recommend the Boromir for the deck I'm coming up with, but you can if you want to. Um, he, he is pretty good, but we're not talking about Gondors at the moment. So, well, some other stuff in here. Well, we've got Defender Ramus. He's a really cool ally. He's a two-cost ally. Zero willpower, one attack, four defense, one hit point. He's a Gondor warrior. Defender Ramus, no other abilities. Why does he need other abilities? He's pretty good as it is. Uh, so keep him in mind. So he's a really good card. So him and Baragon are kind of similar. Where they have the similar stats, except for the hit points. right? And he doesn't have Sentinel or the other ability. But it's still pretty good. So another thing that's really good at came out of this set uh, is Aaron Ryder. So Aaron Ryder is exhaust Aaron Ryder to move one resource from the resource pool to another hero you control. If you're trying to do a tri sphere, it's really good. If you're trying to use uh, uh, Aragorn's ability, actually, this, this works out pretty well. You have to do it before Aragorn actually commits to a quest, but it's still good. You can still give him the resource if you start spending the resources on other people. Um, so it's, it's a bit of a multi purpose guy. Uh, for the rest of this, um, that's about it. So, um, none, of, none, none. I wouldn't say anything else really is 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 going to help you too much here. Uh, Envoy Pelagir could could help you as well. He is a really cheap, especially if you have a noble or Gondor hero. Uh, basically, what he does uh, is is a two cost ally Gondor. When he enters play, one uh, add one resource to a Gondor's pool, so he actually costs one less. Now, saying that. It sounds like a great card, but his stats are only one willpower, one attack, zero defense, and one hit point. So he is probably the same cost as a weak. Like, I would expect one more stat on him, generally speaking. But he does cost one if you play him right. So for one cost, uh, not bad. You know, you're getting you're getting the stats what you, you would expect from a one cost, one cost ally. Um, so what makes him so good about him? Uh, well, the fact that he's neutral, right? The fact that he's, he can, you can be put him in a, a tri sphere deck and and run him. So, uh, first off, so if you're looking for a gamey deck, so I would first recommend this. Uh, and I know there's not a lot of cards in here that I'm recommending, but if you look down here to the steward sphere, this is where things get really interesting. So, if you buy the steward sphere, even if you don't, okay, so even if you don't buy the heirs of Numenor, 
um, you can still do pretty well just by do, buying the Steward Sphere. The only problem is you can't play the Steward Sphere quest without Heirs of Numenor because uh, some of the card quests are, are required to grab it from there. But either way, we're going to play it so that you can actually play the quest as well. So here's the hero that we're going to be talking about. So it's it's Hero in the Fair. He is an Outlands hero. And he has 8 threat, 1 willpower, 1 attack, 1 defense, 4 hit points. He's ranged, Outlands, and you may use resources on Hurlin the Fair resource pool to pay for Outland cards of any sphere. Uh, so that would be Outland's allies cards. So if you add up his stats, uh, they only equal 7, so you're losing 1 point. But for a good reason? Well, maybe. Um, he will become better as time goes on, as you're going to see in a moment. So keep this in mind. So we got him. He, he is your hero for this pack. And who is this? So if we start going down here, we're going to be building what's called an Outlands deck. Uh, and it's very close to Sliver decks. Uh, and if you are familiar with Sliver decks in Magic Gathering, that's basically what we're going to be making here. So once again, we got uh, we got this guy, the Warrior of uh, Lo uh, Lost Ark, or Lost Ar Arch, or whatever, Ankh, Arch. Like arch enemy, I guess. Uh, two. Uh, so he is uh, two cost, one willpower, one attack, one defense, one hit point. Once again, standard stats. Each Outlands character you control gets one, plus one defense. So even this, he's still better than the average two cost uh, by himself with the two extra defense. So keep that in mind. Each Outlands gets one defense. Knights of the Swan. Uh, he's he is one cost with zero stats and everything. So that's garbage. Uh, but he does give one attack, so his stats by himself, it doesn't make him all that good, but every Outlands uh, character you control gets plus one attack. As you can see, this is where we're going with this. Don't forget, our hero, we will have at least one hero that has that plus one attack. Perfect. And, of course, we got the Swordsman. Uh, he has two costs with decent stats, and he gets plus one, uh, plus one uh, quest to everybody. This is, so don't forget, he's also an Outland, so he will give it to himself. That's what makes his stats good. And also, plus one to everybody else makes him a really good card. Uh, and, of course, we got this guy. Um, Elf, uh, Elphias Herdsman. One cost. Crappy, crappy stats. But he gives every Outlands character one extra hit point. And uh, I think that's all of them. So, those are the, the key cards here for this that, I'm, that we're going to be talking about. And Gondorian Shield is another card. So Gondorian Shield is very good. So if 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 you put this on a hero, he gets plus one defense, uh, plus two defense instead. If that hero is a Gondor. So why does that mention so many heroes at front? Well, it really depends upon how you want to do this and how much how much you're willing to spend for a starter decent deck to, to play with your friends. Uh, I'm gonna say that Outlands is still pretty popular among the people. So you may still see a lot of Outlands decks, so you may end up having an issue with other people where they're going to be playing the same type of cards. But to tell you the truth, Outlands stack upon Outlands. So technically there's no, there's no, there's a couple Outlands, I guess, that are unique. But for the most part, a lot of the Outlands characters uh, are not unique. So really, if two people are playing Outlands, that's actually not a bad thing. In fact, you can play Outlands without this guy. Uh, this dude here, he gets a lot of bonuses, but once again, his threat plus his attacks and all that stuff uh, ain't all that good. It's not really that awesome. I mean, he does become great later, and that ability makes it worth it, but he's probably the, one of the least used heroes. So use him if you can. But, uh, right, uh, what else is in here? So that, that's what I'm going to bring up, actually, to tell you the truth. Um, there, there are some, some key stuff in here, like this artifact, which is really good for Aragorn. Uh, but if, let's say, you go to the next one, uh, the Duding Forest, you do get another Outlands ally. Now, is he worth it? Um, uh, not really. I mean, he's good, right? I mean, the fact that he will ready every time, but a lot of the times you may lose an Outlands character, or you might not have one of every sphere. So you just, this is if you have one of every sphere. Um... And he is good. He's unique. He's three costs, one willpower, one attack, one hit, uh, one defense, three hit points, so he can take a hit. And he will only get better as time goes on. Uh, to tell you the truth, he's actually... I find him better. And I know it's going to sound weird, but I'm gonna, I find this guy better and his ability better than... than well, maybe not his ability, because the other guy, let's, let's put up him up. But I like him better than the actual Outlands hero. 
Um, mainly because his stats are almost identically the same. It only costs three. And he got the same kind of uh, bonuses, except for he readies. So uh, he's good to, to add with uh, Hero in the Fair. Um, but if you have a, um, a Tri-Sphere with, with a song, you really can do pretty good things. But once again, that costs more money, actual money to pay for it. Um, so, uh, of course, there's alternatives. So let's say... Uh, well, let's see here. What else is here that 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 that's any good here for Outlands? Um, yeah, I think that's it. You know, um, if you're going to do that, if you're going to go grab that dude, um, you're not gaining a whole lot more. And there are cards, of course, that they put in here, uh, which is going to help out people uh, later. I think there's another Outlands character in here somewhere. Here it is, right here. So here's another Outlands character. So this is for your lore. Uh, he'll help you get Outlands out of your out of your deck, I guess. So I mean, once again, you probably put three of him in there too. Why not? I think the total comes to about sixteen to twenty-one allies. So I mean, that's plenty, right? Um, 16, 17, 18, 19, probably nineteen. I think it's the, the the actual maximum of Outlands heroes there are. But there are other cards as well that that work with this guy. And I don't know if there's any in here. Um, sadly, no. So I mean, there there are other cards uh, that I would recommend. Um, putting in here, but um, yeah, as of right now, this is this is what I would suggest. So I would suggest an Outlands deck, uh, and if you buy um, Heirs of Numenor, uh, you'll get Baragon, which is great. He's a great defender. Uh, you can use those shields that you're going to get in the next pack to bump up his, his defense, and hopefully you'll have enough questing ability. So this guy here, plus if you go back to the core set, and bring up Aragorn. Uh, he, he's not bad. I mean, I know I talked about Theodred before, Theodre before, but, um, you know, I was just uh, thinking about options. But, I mean, him, Baragon, and you got Aragorn, who's going to quest and then get readied. That, that's pretty nice. Um, and even, so we'll go back down here again, the Steward's Fear, we've got Heron the Fair. And he's going to let you put out all your allies. So those three are great. And also, look at that. You get the ring in that set. Uh, and what's that ring do? Uh, well, it's spirit, so we won't be playing that. <laughs> to be completely honest, we won't be. Uh, so there is another um, uh, attachment as well. So if you go back to the core set here, uh, an attachment you can put the Lord, uh, so it's your Aragorn, is going to actually help you out, at least uh, a tactics Aragorn. It's going to be his, his ring. So I think his ring is in here. Uh, Calabrian Stone, well, sorry, Calabrian Stone, not this ring. Uh, and this is itself, you put this on Aragorn, he's, he gives him the spirit icon, so it'll let you play the spirit stuff uh, out of your, uh, your the allies, at least, right? The, the Outlands allies. So you got more resources on another character to spend it. So And also, plus two uh, willpower, it's a really good addition, especially since he's going to be the one who's going to be questing. So uh, him, uh, Baragon, and Aragorn... Uh, sorry, Baragon, Aragorn, and uh, Heron the Fair, uh, th I think that threat will start you at 30. So um, it's kind of high, and I and I will agree with you uh, if you stated that. Um, but I think you can get away with it. Now, it does take some time to get started, um, so you may end up uh, choosing another ally that is a little less costly. Um, at least threat-wise. So if you do, don't go this route, you may end up going another route uh, and probably put in Eowyn, even though you know, you're, you'll be starting significantly less. So it'd be like 8 and 9, um, so 17, so it'd be 27. So you'd be starting under 30. Um, but to be honest, um, because Aragorn is constantly, um, at least if you, if you play him right, uh, constantly uh, standing uh, for defense, He's a pretty good defender, and um, you don't need to worry about defense if you got Baragon. So um, I don't know. Like I, I, I got a feeling that you can actually go with thirty threat with with Aragorn and Harrowin the Fair uses uses um, Calabrian Stone on him, and you got yourself a decent pool of of of, of money. Now, of course, you're going to be playing Suit of Gondors uh, in this deck. I mean, unless anybody else is playing stewards, um, 
but at least for solo play, and you're going to have a pretty good economy. Um, I would I would usually play it on on Aragorn itself, just because you want that extra resource to get them back up again. Um, but it's at least a start, right? So with Aragorn, Baragon, and Hero in the Fair, um, it will only increase. So there is a turtling method, as people call it, where you kind of just sit down and turtle and let things uh, build up. Uh, and that tur- that effects does work usually with most decks, but like I said, there are some decks now that kind of force your hand and and, and whatnot. So it's good to have uh, cards like Aragorn, which can do some heavy questing with the with the Calibrian Stone, uh, while you're while you're kind of trying to struggle to get all your Outlast characters out. Okay, so next we're going to go into to more of a theme. So once again, we're sticking with the hundred dollar deal here you, in the core set included. So we don't have unlimited amount of funds, um, but we want to be able to play something and feel like we're playing a theme, like we're, we're, we're doing something uh, thematic. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you right now, there's there's only real, really one way to do that um, sort of feel of thematic, uh, and that is if you go down and buy the Black Riders. Um, there's nothing better, more themey than these guys. Uh, it is uh, nothing but hobbits, and you start off with a low amount of threat, and for the most part, you can almost build a deck out of the cards in here, um, and it's and it's pretty decent. So um, you would get Sam, Mary, and Pippin. Those are the three heroes I would recommend. So uh, let's take a quick gander at those three heroes. So Sam, Sam is Sam Ganji. Eight threat, three willpower, one attack, one defense, and three hit points. He is a hobbit, and after you engage an enemy with a higher engagement cost than your threat, ready Sam Ganji, and he gets plus one willpower, plus one attack, plus one defense. Wow, that's amazing. And he readies. Pretty cool, hey? So he's definitely the key card for a hobbit deck. I really like him, and let's go back. The other card is Mary. Mary. And this very blurry version of Mary here, um, looking at his sword. I don't know why, but I guess that's 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 what he. That's really interesting. Okay, but what is he? Well, he looks like he has crappy stats, but uh, we'll get to that. So he is a six threat, two willpower, zero attack, one defense, two hit points, and he gets plus one for every Hobbit hero you control. So in this case, he's gonna get plus three, and if you're playing the scenario or the quest for this, you may end up getting a plus four, which is pretty snazzy. All right, sorry about that. And uh, right, his effects even pretty is even pretty good. Uh, after Mary participates in an attack and destroys an enemy, ready another character that that participated in an attack. So we're going to want to have uh, allies with him, obviously. Um, and those allies are going to ready with him because he can't ready himself using that ability, sadly. Now, even even another option here, and there is a combo as well, but it's a really shitty combo. But let's say someone's playing Legolas. Um, and they're using their range to attack. You can ready their Legolas to give another attack to another character. So, I mean, at least especially one that they control or even one that you control. So, I mean, that's wicked. Um, there is another combo with uh, if you had a friend who, who, who built the deck with uh, um, another hero called, uh, I guess it was uh, uh, something Brand, uh, Son of Bane. Brand, Son of Bane, right. Uh, he has an ability where he readies a when uh, I guess if a character is destroyed, ready a hero uh, the another player controls. So that's when you're using the range attack for Bane uh, or Bran son of Bane, and he can he you know because Bran participated, he can ready Bran if he destroys the enemy. So you get to have basically a bit of a combo there where Bran attacks and Mary attacks, and they both ready the, each other. Uh, so that's not bad if you got a friend who's willing to do that and make another tactics uh, decision. But anyways, and lastly, Pippin. And Pippin's probably better. I, I well, he's not an attacker, but I they all got their purposes. And for Pippin, he's a six threat, two willpower, one attack, one defense, two hit points. He's a Hobbit, and each Hobbit in play, sorry, uh, each enemy in play gets plus one engagement cost for each Hobbit you control. Uh, Hobbit hero in particular. And after you engage an enemy with a higher engagement cost, draw a card. So once again, it's about keeping your threat low. So at a 6-6 six, six is 12 plus 8. You're looking at a 20 start. And uh, my god, that is low. That is what we would call 
uh, secrecy mode. And, uh, and, um, And with secrecy mode, uh, there's a couple options open. Now, sadly, we're probably not going to see them in this budget deck, uh, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what we're going to find here. So what we got here, that's going to be so good here. That makes this nice and thematic. Well, we got Build a Pony, one. He's going to come in for free and give all the hobbits plus one hit points. Uh, he's only two cost, uh, but you're never going to pay that cost. Uh, he's not worth it. Uh, one quest, one attack, zero defense, two hit, uh, sorry, two hit points, and he's going to give all the hobbits plus one hit points. And if you control Stan Gadgey, I'm sorry for that. And if you control Stan Gadgey, um, he comes in for free. That's pretty good. And there's another hero, Fatty Bulger. You can use him if you want. I just don't recommend it. Uh, right, so I mean, we got all sorts of, we got, you know, we got this dude here, apparently he's lore, I thought he, yeah, he is lore, yeah. Uh, so each hero you control with a trait, undefended damage, so once again, it's a very Hobbit related, but it also is thematic. You're playing as the Hobbits, you're going to be running away from friggin', you know, for this quest in particular, you're going to be running away from the, um... Uh, the Nazgul, as they're going to be trying to hunch down. Uh, I think that alone is cool. Um, and once again, a lot of thematicness and even some gaming stuff that that they help you out, like the dagger here, the dagger of Western uh, which is a weapon they're going to probably uh, place on Mary. Uh, it will give him plus one uh, attack. Uh, it's a cost of one attachment artifact item weapon. Uh, and uh, plus two in tech if the engagement cost is higher than your threat. So once again, that is a common theme. So how do you make sure that your threat is lower? Well, for the most part, you, you're you're going to be questing with with Sam. He's your quester. Uh, Mary is going to be your... Um, he could be your quester too, I mean, if you got nothing to worry about, because you're going to have low threat, so he's probably going to be questing as well. And Pippin, he could quest as well instead of Mary. Um, but keep in mind, your, your hit points are going to be kind of uh, limited, right? So you're going to have to watch out for that. Um, there are certain things in here that's going to help you out. For instance, this Hobbit Cloak here, uh, this is going to help you defend. So you're going to probably pop that on your defender. I would recommend Sam Ganji to be your defender because that's you. If you quest with him and engage somebody, he readies, gets plus one to defend a good attack and plus getting plus two um, if your engagement cost is is still lower than, than the actual threat. Uh, sorry, the actual, sorry, if your threat's actually lower than the engagement cost of the enemy, getting two more defense, that is pretty hardcore. Um, so very thematic in a sense that uh, you are a hobbit, a group of hobbits, hiding away and striking at this, at certain decision, uh, sorry, uh, I guess certain times, um, which is exactly what you would expect of hobbits, right? Uh, they're kind of halflings and kind of thiefy and kind of stay in the background. And, um, you know, they're convincing, like, uh, people to help them out, like this dude here, right? Um, Butterman, Butter, Butterbur, right? So, I mean, Bar Bar Bartleman Butterbur, right? Um, I mean, he's cool. I mean, he, that, that I like that. That card is really good, especially when you have to do it undefended. Um I think this 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 box set, which is going to cost you about thirty five bucks uh, Canadian, um, is definitely worth it for a thematic feel. Uh, so, what else do we want to get with this? Well, I mean, once again, we've got lots of things that are very determined. Uh, now, you're not probably use smoke rings. You're not going to use Hobbit pipes. So, luckily for you, you don't have to worry about those things because that's going to be usually with either Fatty Bulger or the uh, the other card, which is a really good one too. I'm not going to say anything wrong with the Frodo, but if you're going to be playing Frodo, you're going to probably be playing the, the, the Frodo that came out of the set for this quest. So what else are we going to be recommending? So if you buy, if so, we got the core set. So we got core set, 50 bucks. Got it. We've got, um, we've got, well, probably 50, more like 45, but anyways. Uh, and then we got, uh, we got the box set. So we got a box set, uh, Lord of the Rings box set, gives you all the Hobbit stuff. So we're looking at uh, you know thirty five bucks, and then we're looking at fifteen twenty dollars for this, uh, which will put you at about a hundred bucks, right? So with this one here, get Boromir as the tactics hero. Um, he's pretty cool. Eleven threat, one willpower, three attack, uh, two hit points. Sorry, two with defense of five hit points, and of course he's a noble uh, Gondor warrior. And raise your threat by one to ready him, and uh, you can discard him to uh, do two damage to an enemy gauge with the player. Uh, we're not going to be really caring about him. 
So what do I got this set for? Why did I bring this up? Why did I come all the ways up here? Well, for one, uh, you can play your quests. So this this quest here, even though it's 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 a continuation of another quest, you can play this quest with your core set. So you don't need to go buy anything else to, to kind of mash these up. As well as the is the 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 box set that we bought before, the the Hobbit with the Hobbits in it, the uh, Lord of the Rings. Um, Saga box, I guess the first saga box. You can play that one by itself. You don't need to buy the previous one or anything like that or any any other thing. So you can play that by itself. So so far for questing, we're still doing good. Uh, one of the key cards I'm, I'm going to show you here is Fast Hitch, uh, which is going to basically be the card um, that's going to make all the difference in the world. Uh, this Fast Hitch, you're going to be using this um, instead or maybe with. I'm not sure, but definitely uh, you're going to be using it. Um, in your deck with your hobbits uh, so they can get extra actions because actions is really really powerful in in in, in any deck uh but yeah fast hitch you're gonna throw that on top of uh us uh, could be sam if you want to give him multiple attacks but i would probably throw it upon pippin uh sorry mary i meant to say to give him multiple attacks especially if he gets swarmed right uh because by that time he should be ready to rock um and is there anything else here that i can suggest uh, and I don't think there is. I think for the most part, uh, you can use Song of... No, we're not going to use Song of Mocking. Uh, Song of Battle, you could probably use because you, you can do that to kind of flush out your, your, your resources. So Song of Battle is a zero... Oh, sorry, a one cost, a song, neutral, uh, attached to a hero, and it gives gives them the, uh, the, the tactics icon, which you can use, of course, because, you know, you're going to be using feints, and you're going to be using stuff like that in here, right? So for thematic purposes, I would probably get uh, a Hobbit deck, which is nice. It's just cute looking. Um, and it's all about just sneaking around, being really, you know... I mean, the Outland deck we made before, I mean, I don't know. The Outlands are not that big in the story. Um, they kind of do their own thing for the most part, so you don't really see anything about them. But you, you follow the Hobbits throughout the entire story. So... You know, it's very thematic. It makes you feel like, you know, oh, Sam Genji, oh, Mary, oh, Pippin. Um, uh, or, and, you know, gives you the, the feel that you're, you're following these people. All right, lastly, we're going to be talking about another one. Uh, it's kind of thematic, but in the same sense, it has a lot better comboing, uh, I guess, way of doing things. So once again, you're going to get your core set. Um, and I'd, I'm trying to think. I think you may use Gimli for this one that I'm going to be talking about. Um, uh, what I would recommend probably doing at first is is getting the Hobbit over the hill, under the hill uh, expansion pack, uh, mainly for the quests. Uh, I would have, I, to be completely honest, there's there's better on the doorstep, I think, but over the hill, under the hill, we'll get you started here. Um, and the ones that we're kind of looking at here, um, I mean, there's a lot, to be really honest. Uh, the one I like here is Nori. Nori is a nine threat, two willpower, one attack, Two defense, four hit point, dwarf. And anytime you play a dwarf, he lowers your threat by one. Um, I like that in particular. I really do. Um, but uh, I mean, some of these, they're all really good, right? Like if you control these five dwarves, I mean, there's a dwarf characters that come as dwarves themselves. Draw one additional resource beginning of the resource phase. He's really good as well. So that's Nori with eight threat, two willpower, two attack, one defense, and three hit points. Um. I don't know about Open Shield, to be honest. Um, I guess he's the same, hey. So if you can look at Nori here, uh, you draw a card. So yeah, I guess the resource is probably better, hey. But his threat's too high. I just don't like that threat. That threat is way too high. Uh, but either way, uh, I would get Nori here. And also, you get a shitload of dwarves. So if you get Nori... And Ori, because the actual card draw is pretty good. So far, so good. Um, but, uh, yeah, so anyways, we got two. So we got a spirit and a, and a lore. And then we're going to have spirit lore. Um, and we're going to have a leadership here in a second. But either way, we're going to use Philly, Killy. I mean, they're all wicked. Like, like even Philly and Killy. I mean, once again, you know, once you play... Philly from your hand, and you can search your deck for Killy and put him into play. So then you're going to put Killing to play. And if you put Killing to play, after you put it from your hand, you'll search your deck for Killy or Philly and put him in your hand. So, I mean, that's more dwarves that are going to come out. Uh, uh, we've got, uh, you know, we got Bofer. 
you know, he's going to help you get uh, uh, weapon cards. So there's weapon cards in the core set. There's weapon cards here. There's Foe Hammer. That's a wicked card. You know, you exhaust a weapon, you draw three cards. I mean, this is this is just solid. No, I, I don't know about Gandalf. I probably wouldn't recommend this Gandalf. Uh, Cram is pretty good, but I wouldn't I wouldn't use it too much. Um, so really, the only the only thing I'm going to say here is we're going to use spirits. We're going to use lore. Uh, of course, there's other options you have. Uh, if you don't wish to go with all uh, dwarves, I could probably even take Ori out and replace him with something else. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second, actually. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you don't, I mean, there's a lot. There's a couple lore uh, cards here that I would recommend. But really, what you want is spirit and tactics. Uh, sorry, not spirit. Spirit and leadership. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, I mean, there are some good tactics cards. So I mean, hmm, it is a hard one. But if I were, if I was going to make this deck, uh, I would definitely use Nori. So we've seen him already. And we're going to back out of that one. And then we're going to go to Return to Mirkwood. I know it's kind of strange we're going into here again. But once again, it's another quest that you can use for your core set. Uh, worst case scenario. And this guy here, um, he's 11 threat, 1 willpower, 2 attack, 3 defense, and 5 hit points. While Dane uh, Ironfoot is ready, dwarf characters get plus 1 attack, plus 1 willpower. Uh, now, using him, uh, if you look down here, you've got some other stuff here. Uh, you guys, you know, can gain Sentinel and whatnot. Uh, take you all down. Misty Mountains. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so a lot of these cards you're probably not going to be using. Uh, but Dane is definitely really good. So out of the core set, what are you going to be getting here out of the core set? Well, the core set, you've got Gimli. Um, so... Uh, I'm not really sure which one I would use, but it would either be Gimli or, actually, to tell you the truth, I would probably use Thalon. He'll get additional attack, he'll get additional willpower, so you can still quest, and at least his questing does something, right? Um, would you quest with, uh, well, I don't know. I probably would quest with him, because he has a low, uh, a low threat. Or use Gimli. Uh, get, the only problem with Gimli is that you're probably going to be starting with a starting threat of 30, which is not too bad, um, saying that. Uh, but having to lower it a little bit more with Thalon probably might, might be a better option. Uh, and you'll get that extra warrior out. That's at least what I think here. So let's go back down here again and take a look at this area. Pack. Of course, there are other cards that uh, you can use here to kind of get uh, some extra bonuses. Um, but if you get these packs and you kind of build upon this, you can make a decent deck, a decent dwarf dwarf, a dwarf deck, uh, especially with veteran axe hands. You're going to be having those. And there's a couple other dwarf cards you can put in there um, from the core set. But once you go through the uh, sorry, once you go through like. Kazadom, Kazadum, um, you're going to start getting some really good stuff. So once again, uh, we're going to look at the core sets. Uh, we can we can get the um, over the hill, under the hill, and really, if you want to just skip that other one and you want to spend a little extra money, so Return to Merkle will give you one of the best uh, dwarves there are, at least in my opinion. Uh, you can just go right to Kazadum, and you know you'll get you'll get Biffer, and he's pretty good. Uh, and Dwalin, which is not bad, but I but I probably wouldn't recommend going with him. Uh, Biffer's pretty good. He's really good for 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 pain resources. So Biffer is a seven seven threat, two willpower, one attack, two defense, three hit points. So if you add that up, that's three. Three is five, six, seven, eight. So he actually has eight stats for seven threat. That's unheard of. He's the first one that I know. Actually, I think there's two, but that's still pretty 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 beefy. And you pay one resource for anybody's pool to add a resource to his. So that just basically means you can make sure that you have always, or most always, have a lore resource for something. Narvi's belt is awesome. Uh, the song here is awesome. Everything here is awesome for dwarves. So even if you want to skip Return to Mirkwood, I would recommend getting Cause of Doom. Um, and I know we're going over a budget here. And over and under the hill, uh, in your core set, and then later on, purchase Return to Mirkwood, and that will give you a really good combo-y deck. And for the most part, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be playing, you're going to be playing dwarves to lower your threat, uh, to draw cards, 
and use abilities um, based for for any sphere. Um, it's it's wicked. So so once again, as we'll, we'll do a little review here. So if you're going to go for a gamey sort of deck, I would recommend getting the core set. Um, of course, you're going to have the core set. That's the only way you can play. And then buying Heirs of Numenor and Steward Sphere, that will give you those three alone will get you a decent Outlands deck, which you can play with your friends. And if they're not playing Outlands, that's you know an option, that's a decent option. And if they are playing Outlands, uh, you can substitute uh, the actual the the heroine, uh, sorry, the heroine the fair uh, with uh, Elrond from Shadow and Flame. Which uh, will give you all the icons here uh, to play your 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 allies. Uh, now his ability sucks and his high threat kind of sucks, uh, but you know what? Having it will only speed it up because everybody will have uh, non-unique uh, Outlands heroes and it'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's for that. Uh, and if you're looking for a good thematic time um, without spending too much money, the core set, uh, the Black Riders. And I would recommend just for addition to grab the Dead Marshes, and that'll give you a, a decent cards to make a good Hobbit hero deck um, with some uh, bonuses in the meantime. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think that's a good good call. Um, and uh, fast hitch is really, uh, really, really, really powerful, especially if you only got one core and you only have one expected unexpected courage. Uh, I would probably go with Dead Marshes as a nice alternative. And lastly. We're kind of like a combo-ish type of experiment um, where it's going to be strong either way you look at it. Uh, I would recommend going down, grabbing over and under hill, over hill and under hill, and as well as um, the Dar uh, sort of cause of doom. Uh, now I know they're both expansion boxes, so really that 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 would be almost that would be over sixty dollars by itself. Uh, but um, that will give you a good combo-y feel where you're, where you're, you know, you play a card to do this effect, to do that effect, to do this effect. It kind of gives you that feel. While well, you're still playing like a thematic sort of deck, you're still playing a dwarf deck, and the dwarves are still traveling through, um, you know, uh, the Hobbit saga. Uh, so you kind of still get that, and you don't have to worry about your quests. You still use all your quests and stuff like that. Uh, but if you're going to also gain an additional, so if you're going to spend the extra and you're going to spend $100 all together, grab Return to Mirkwood, and that will give you a wicked dwarf hero uh, to play with. So once again, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to write all this down or whatnot, uh, and I probably didn't do this in the, in the best fashion as possible. But if you hear me out, uh, that is what I would recommend doing, um, at least if you're on a budget. And I just happen to be on a budget myself. But I'm so obsessed with the game, I keep buying it. Um, I just love this game a lot. So that's it. That's all I got to say today. Uh, so uh, maybe next time I'll, I'll play one of these expansion packs, and and or at least uh, maybe the, uh, the the Gen Con pack, uh, and see how I do with that. Uh, I've got a couple decks, and once again, I'm playing a new deck, a new Sylvan deck. Uh, it's going to look very similar, actually, but I did make a particular change that changed uh, how I'm going to be playing it. So I guess you guys will see that next time. As for everyone, every, everything else, uh, thank you for listening, and thank you for watching, and thank you um, if you like what I do, uh, subscribe below, uh, press the like button or whatnot, and you can check out our Facebook, uh, and you can go to www.facebook.com slash Rolling Intentions, I believe. But anyways, you can check us out there. And um, also look at our blog. Our blog's at www.rpgbg.com uh, uh, slash, I think, blogspot.com, actually. <laughs> I do want to get uh, uh, rollingtentions.com back, but um, I just uh, I don't see the point of spending the money at the moment. All right. Cheerio, and uh, tell until next time. I'll see you guys later. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Take care.